Well, today we're doing something a little bit different, aren't we? Yes, we are. Mm, we're going for a bath because we both stink. We're going in there, kill Cullen's bathhouse. So, yeah, we're going to go and get a seaweed bath, a hot seaweed bath. And um, maybe, what's the other thing? Oh, the steam. Mm, <laughs> a steam box. We're going to shove, shove each other in a box and... Boil each other alive. Basically, yeah. We're going to lobster each other, so... <laughs> Could be interesting. I don't know whether I'm looking forward to this or not. Right, well we've got this whole room to ourselves. Yes. Uh, we've got two baths and a murder box. It's not a murder box. It's a murder box. Only when you get in it. So we'll show you the baths. Yeah, they're proper like old tubs, aren't they? Victorian tubs. There's your seaweed in there. And you've got pipe and hot water on the side there. And uh, cold water. And then that one there, he said. Is your cold shower that you have at the end. If you're... <laughs> if you're brave enough. Don't know whether we're going to be brave enough, but we probably will, and there'll be a lot of screaming going on. Would you like to demonstrate the murder box then? In said murder box, we open it up, we have a seat with a towel on, and when you sit in your cupboard, you can adjust so you're tall or short, and then you get in, and you lift the handle, and the comes out. Put it down, put it down. <laughs> Smoke alarm oh my God. Right, we've got an hour in here, so um, let's get going. Right, so Emma is first in the murder box. How many minutes are you supposed to be in here? Two to three minutes? Yeah. Okay, right, there's my handle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's getting a bit hot. While Emma's doing the um, murder box, I'm going to get the bath ready. It's the weirdest thing I've ever done, is being a seaweed bath. Emma's cooking away there. It's now my turn, but it's in um, murder box. A bit weird, this. <laughs> Pull the lever and cook the goose. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna frost up in a minute. It's nice and warm. Oh, makes you want a wiener. I can't see a thing now. I need to say, I can't see nothing. <laughs> I told you to take your glasses off. Oh, 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 oh. He's looking up too high in here. I do like the murder box. I know it is, I might have the engine. He's earned well. I'm changing the name of it, it's not the murder box now. Oh, it's a satisfaction chamber. Are you alright there? I am, you know. You're having fun? I am a mermaid. You're not, you're just a human in a bucket of seaweed. I really want to get back in the murder box, but time for a bath. I genuinely can't remember the last time I was in a bath. Because you don't walk. Hello, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you what you remind me of? Here comes old Greg. He's a scaly manfish. <laughs> That's salty. <laughs> Are you okay with it? I feel like a lobster. <laughs> it's weirdly slimy, satisfying. Yeah? Mmm. I, I am a fan. Oh my god. <laughs> Apparently this, apparently this, tricks you. Pause. 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 Yeah. Oh. Went a bit hot there. Going back in the murder box, but the box of tranquility. So basically, this place has been open. <laughs> Not a fan of salt. I could never swallow. Um, this place has been open since the Titanic was going. And it's um, old. It's still the same as it was back then. And it's probably still as good, because I don't think seaweed's changed. Oh. I genuinely don't know what to say to you. Worth <laughs> every single penny. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I feel, but I feel a little bit sticky, but I, I don't know, I feel, I feel like I could go dancing, I feel, I feel nimble. Feel nimble? I don't know what this is, and I don't even know what I'm doing, but that's how I feel. Do you feel rejuvenated? No, 
feel like I go dancing. I feel nimble. I tell you what, it makes you. It makes your skin feel amazing. Nimble. No. Your skin's not nimble, you absolute whopper. He's <laughs> a whopper. No, it feels like you've had a really expensive treatment at a salon. salon. Never had one, so I wouldn't know what it feels like. But this cost us 55 euros. For the two of us. For the two of us. And you get an hour in the murder box and the seaweed buffs. And the showers. Which work it out, £22 each. It, uh, all day long and if we see another one on our travels we will 100% do another one yeah because it's supposed to be really good for joint pain and what else was there i don't know but i'm Just hot now i need to go and get i need fresh air now i feel you want some food as well don't you oh yeah you're hungry i'm <laughs> mega hungry <laughs> yeah. right, we'll leave this here then <laughs> the murder box makes you hungry so there's plenty of rooms that must be an old um don't know what that is but it's old it's just worth doing. That must be the boiler room. You can actually buy up Atlantic seaweed back here, hand harvesters. Yeah, so all the seaweed, that comes from right out there, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. locally harvested. And you can buy it there as well. Also, open seven days a week as well. And the last bath is at 7pm. So if you are in Enniscone, definitely check it out. And a scone, in well, a scone, I can't even remember. I don't, well worth a visit. Yeah, well worth a visit. So after finishing in the seaweed baths, I'm taking a little bit of a look around Enniscrone, which is an absolutely beautiful little place as well. Definitely somewhere that we'd recommend to visit. We then took a short drive from Enniscrone right down to Bellina, and we're probably murdering the name of the place as well. But that's how it's spelled, and that's how we're saying it. Well, we've made it. Yes, we have. To County Mayo. So Emma's just found an arrow on a tree, and it says, go that way. But I don't want to go that way. I want to go this way. <laughs> And then I want to go this way as well. Come on. Ooh. I like I the look of pardon. this. I said, ooh, I like the look of this. So we found this old building. Look at the colours. Perfect for you, that. One occupant needed. And there she is. I could make that fabulous. It did used to be two storey at some point. Poppy You were get very it. short. Oh my God, Emma, it's another door. That is designed for you. Ice house. Beg your pardon? Ice house. She keeps coming up with random things. Maybe Ice to do with house cows. Ice house built in 1815. That's what that is. Are we all going in? They're having enough. They're having none of it. <laughs> Come on. So go on then. Honest opinion. What do you make of it? Well, are you in the ensuite? Well, I wouldn't say it was an ensuite now, and I don't know that you want to come in here because it's got a um, it's got a, a secret hole. It's I got don't a know what's in the hole. hole. Yeah. Where's the secret? There. I don't know what's living in there. There's going to be something in there. That that no, yeah. Uh, bye. I'm going. Honestly, walking through these woods was absolutely magical. It was kind of like Pan's Labyrinth versus the Neverending Story, and. We just wandered for hours, let the dogs loose, let them free, and they had a whale of a time. But one of them wanted a stick. Yeah, the psychotic one, the smallest one, she needed a stick. So she went back, she found the perfect stick, and that is her stick. We are in the enchanted forest. I mean, look at the trees. Look at the, just, imagine being a kid, you could climb, you could make a bloody, a den on there. A bit wonky, these steps, aren't they? They are a bit wonky, aren't they? Can you, um? Imagine standing here, looking out onto your land. Now this place we're at now is a bar and a cafe. Ah. Mm, it's very posh, isn't it? Did not know that. Very extreme. Proper posh. stately home. This feels like you're literally in the middle of nowhere, doesn't it? Yeah, I like it. But you're not. You're literally right in the middle of Bellina. I'm going to be honest here. When we got in last night, we parked up on the other side in the woods. Um, and we were all right there. Then we went for a walk. We loaded us across the um, the river. There was a little pub and a parking area. A little Google map parking area. Went into the pub. Oh, honest to God, I've never seen a place with so many whiskies. Um, the barmaid was absolutely lovely as well. Um, to be fair, she probably made us drink more. We'd come out several pints, several gins later. <laughs> we got told, yeah, you can go and park there. So this is where we've ended up. I'll show you. 
So it's basically just a car park, but all these little buildings here, well, they're all businesses. You've got a coffee shop, you've got a hairdresser, you've got a chocolate shop, you've got a Pilates studio, you've got a beauty studio there, a health and well-being place. Now, this is the beauty about it. Emma wants to get a wash and blow because they're things that we would do if we were back home, if we had a home, if we didn't a house. They're the normal everyday things that she would do you know, every couple of weeks. So just because we're now living in the van, it doesn't mean that she has to stop doing them things. Now, waiting up to this in the morning kind of does make you realise this is why we've done this. Like, this is why we've given up the house. We've put everything into storage. We've moved into the van. We're going travelling. It's, it's days like this when you wake up and you look out and you see all this beauty. That's why you've done it. But they're the reasons. It's stunning. The place is stunning. Yeah, I think so far, this is my favourite place. I mean, look at that. That is absolutely breathtaking. Right, well, Emma's gone in to get her hair done. I mean, the dogs are just chilling. Well, I'd say chilling, they're fast asleep. Uh, oh, one thing. Loads of flies today, and our um, fly screens have come in an absolute treat. Web net fly screens, if you uh, want one of them, I will leave the links in the description, but they are perfect. So, I've just been doing some editing, gone a bit cloudy, um, so I think we're going to see how Emma's getting on, because the hairdressers is literally over there. Right, I've left it to it because I'm getting the um, the hairy eyeball there. I'm um, going to land myself in all sorts of trouble. So, but it's nice. It's nice to see you just, you know, doing normal things. You don't have to be a, a caveman when you're living in a van. You know, I'm sure plenty of girls go to hairdressers and go and get things done. Hello. Are you happy with that? Yes. Yes, you feel more human. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> so Looks much more. Very nice and bouncy. Yes. So does the hair. Very funny. So Emma seems to be hiding something. <laughs> What's behind your back? Nothing you need to know. <laughs> What's behind your back? Oh look, she couldn't resist. What are they? Hair products. But you know what that is, because you've seen it in the house since I had my hair burn off by that silly lady. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'm in an island now. I can say what I want. <laughs> I wonder if she can do anything with this. She's busy now. Oh well, it'll just have to stay. You can use some of this though. It's hair repair stuff. Nothing wrong with my hair. Just down the river, not far from where we've parked, is the SS Creep Boom. This concrete ship, yes, I said concrete, was built in 1919 after World War I when there was a massive steel shortage. It was part of a fleet of 12. The Crete boom was launched in 1920. This beauty of a barge is 200 feet long and constructed entirely of reinforced concrete and, well, weighs a staggering amount, as you can imagine. This heavy duty barge served a noble purpose for a few years, mostly as a floating storage barge. Because let's be honest, it wasn't winning any races, but unfortunately, concrete ships were not built to last. By the late 1930s, the SS Creek boom was no longer booming and found a new home here on the River Moy, where it was repurposed as a water break. Today, this massive concrete relic, slowly being reclaimed by nature, still remains here for tourists to visit, and its concrete hull stands as a unique reminder of not only Ireland's maritime history, but also of the 20th century engineering and resilience. So after taking a look at the actual weird and concrete boat, got ourselves to bed because it was a big day, going into Bellina and discovering the Salmon Festival. There's loads of people are walking around in like old traditional clothing. It is National Heritage Day, but it's um, weird, isn't it? It is very different. Yeah. Oh look, they've got free kids, kids crafts. Oh, That's good. It'll be all right. Finally found a tank that would suit Emma. 
<laughs> small enough, isn't it? Right. And then you, once you've once you've laid that one, then you can, <laughs> you can move up, you can move up to that one, yeah. <laughs> you alright, Em? What have you found? Sweeties. Emma is in. Oh, uh, can you spell them all out? Heaven. Do you reckon? You alright there? Get it? That's the closest you're ever getting to one of them horrible creatures. Oh. Right, so Emma's always getting bit, like all the time. So she's tried every single cream going, and I think we're about to try another one. Um, so this is a really good soothing balm, so you can use it for bites, for burns, for scratches if you like garden and you get like horns or whatever. It's just really good for healing. Okay, I'll try one of those, please. So, uh, this bell, that bell right there, that was of a ship that used to go from where? It used to go from here to Liverpool, the SS Bellina. And then the ship sank and um, somebody found the bell when he was diving and brought him back to Bellina and um they donated it to the town because three of the 15 that died were actually from here yeah so it now lives where we were parked on the quayside in a building there I don't know about you but I'm getting the smell of curry yeah and, um, <laughs> is it making you hungry <laughs> yeah smell of curry and um false tan it is genuinely like being back in Liverpool on it, a night time. On a night time. Some of the young girls are dressed like they're going out. Um, yeah. Not wearing much. <laughs> and covered in... Uh, it looks more like creosote. No, no. It does, but that's Liverpool on any night of the week. Now, if you ever wanted to realise... If you ever wanted to know how to make traditional wool... That's how it's done. Genuinely mad to see someone actually like doing proper wool off what we consider bits of fluff, isn't it? <laughs> a little bits of fluff when she's making um, actual wool. Spinning the spinning, spinning the yarn. The yarn. Oh, not a few people that have done that. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. That's where the fluff comes from. So no, babe, you're not getting a sheep. But the little one's so cute and it's wearing a collar. I mean, to be fair, there's a girl standing next to her wearing a collar. And we're not taking her out. Oh, but she's not fluffy. No comment. And then you walk down from the, the goats and the, all the food. And then you all of a sudden come across a beekeeper. Now, we weren't joking, were we? There's actual bees. Yeah. Now we're talking sewing machines. I do like a good sewing machine. You do like a good sewing machine. I love a good sewing machine. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's all sorts here. There's even um, Inspector Gadget. Inspector Gadget as well. <laughs> they never thought I'd see him in Ireland, but yeah, he's, uh, he's just about to pass you right there. You gotta admit there are some of the most craziest things I never thought I would see a woman doing wool and then a, 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 a burger bar and then a guy selling sweets and then next to that a sewing machine and in the shop window there's like proper vintage custom made dresses yeah There's literally stalls everywhere, everywhere you go. There's a stall doing something. Oh, I need a big wooden bat for in the van for when I you beg get your out. pardon? I said I need a big wooden bat for in the van for Do when you, you get now? out of control. <laughs> yeah. Right, put it in the comments. Put it in the comments what you think they are. I right, put it now. I'll give you 10 seconds. And then Emma's going to tell you exactly what they are. You ready? You ready? What are they? Potato masher. There you go, that's a potato masher. And that there, right, that's a spoon. Just 
proper old vintage car outside hey. a proper old vintage pub. Look at that. Absolutely brilliant. And I do have one of them badges as well. That was my Uncle Tom's. Well, right, we've now got a happy Emma. <laughs> She's found a cupcake stand. Do you not, do you not want anything? I'll go for a one through to seven. A one through to seven? Yeah. Can I go with a total or inputs? I think it's time. Yeah. We had a little sit down and a yeah. cake. Have you got any cakes? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Oh. Of course I have. You got them. <laughs> oh. That's it. She's settled. What next? Sit let's your bum down. Let's the cakes. There's all sorts. Loads of Chinese restaurants as well. Oh, look at them cakes. Which oh. one do you want? Oh, that one. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. You can have the lemon. Oh, you'd eat that one, wouldn't you, Nige? Hey, that one. There. Look at that. Oh, Matt it's Lucas. About 700 calories in the top of my cake alone. Matt Lucas would stuff all them down his neck, wouldn't he? Mmm. Mm.